Today we're going to be changing the front and rear brakes and rotors on a 2003 Toyota 4Runner. This is going to be your Mr. Hands. Remember, so, don't be mad, be glad. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to safely lift the front. We'll get into the back later. You go to lift the front axle. You see this divot here where the strut connects. You place your jack in that space to sit, lift the car. Do not leave it on the jack. Got it there. Let's start lifting. I'm doing this one handed while filming. Got the wheel off the ground. Take your jack stand to lift the car a little bit more. Place the jack stand and lift it a little more. Right under there, where the A-frame connects to the frame of the car. Place your jack stand right there, lower it down gently until it's resting on it. There you go. Alright, here are the tools you're going to need. A decent hammer if the rotors are stuck, key if you have locked lug nuts like so where you 17 millimeter 21 21 this millimeter for your lug nuts 17 millimeter for the rotor 12 millimeter for a little bolt that holds on the brake line a C clamp to press the brake pad against the caliper to squeeze the pistons back in and screwdrivers for prying things start working them lug nuts off Always remember to loosen your lug nuts before you get the car in the air. Alright. You get it loose, you give it a good slap. Off comes the wheel. There's your rotor, your caliper. This is your caliber here. If you look on the back side, I don't know if you can see this, there's a bolt here, and then there's a bolt directly underneath it here. We take both these off. This up here, this is that uh, 12 millimeter that you're gonna have to take off. This is just a clip that holds the line. This isn't a this is a flex here, but then this is a fixed line all through here. So you're gonna have to remove this clamp so that you can move that caliber back when you put the new rotor in. And watch this part live action. Breaking loose the caliper bolts. Next one. Second one. Two. All right. and just take them off. Alright, and here you go, he's removing the 12 millimeter holding that solid brake line. That's so that you can remove the caliper off of the rotor. Then you remove the caliper and rest it on something. Don't let it hang from the line, it'll damage the line. So you rest it down on that A line, that uh, A frame. Sometimes the rotors are stuck. That's what this is for. If it's stuck, you just give it a tap around. This one's pretty loose, so it'll come right off. And make sure not to hit your studs, or you will not be able to put the wheel back on. There's the old rotor. Here's the new rotor. When you get these, they have a coating on them. It's a rust preventative. You want to take that off with some brake clean or some carburetor cleaner before you install it because that coating will gum up the new brake pads and make them smoke. You don't want that. So you get that coating off with just paper towel or something and some... Sometimes uh, when you put these new rotors on they want to fall a little bit. So if you take one of your lugs, you do like this and kind of hold it in place while you reassemble your caliber. What you gotta remember about the calibers is you got the brake pads on there and they wear through. So what you gotta do is you gotta pop them out 
and push the calibers back and that's what the C clamp is going to be for. Also, you've got these clips here. There's like a little cotter pin here. You pull that out. It's a little screwdriver. Pull those out. They should give you new ones with your brake pads. Save the old ones just in case. Not a regular cotter pin would work for it if you have to. They should give you all that. And then these pins slide. You'll notice that they have this little spring. Sometimes they give you those, sometimes they don't. Um, it's basically just like a little tensioner here. But you're going to want to make sure that you keep that or put the new one that they give you on. So we'll show you how that reassembles here in a few minutes when we put the new brake pads in. And after you remove these pins, you may want to take a wire brush and brush them or sand them down just a little bit because they have this corrosion building up here. You want to sand that off, you'll make the pad slide easier on them. So you want to use your old pad or a piece of wood. Piece of wood, and because uh, you want to gum up your new stuff, nick it up and everything. So what you're going to do is you're going to place it right on there. Make sure you get a good place to for the C clamp to bind up on. And you will remember to make sure your brake fluid isn't all the way full. If your brake fluid's all the way full and you start doing this, it's going to overflow and make a mess. So check your brake fluid level before you do this. Because what's happening with this is it's pressing the fluid from behind these pistons back into the master cylinder. This would be a good chance to bleed the brakes, but we're not going to bleed the brakes right now. So we're just pushing the fluid back in. You can watch another video on how to bleed brakes on this vehicle. But as for now, all we're doing is just the calipers. While we're reducing these pistons, let me give you the brown tech tip of the day. While you're down here checking your brakes, you can check your other suspension components for wear. For say this, make sure it's not all cracked and there's not just, make sure things aren't loose. Give your tie rods a turl. They don't move very well. There's no play in them. You're good there. Check your ball joint. It looks okay. But if you look here at this shock, you're starting to be an oily residue. That's showing that that shock is beginning to fail. So now would be a good time to go ahead and save up, get you some new shocks to put in. Or in this case, it's struts. So you can buy some quick struts on eBay or get them from your local auto store or Toyota. And when it comes time, I'll do a video on how to change these out. I got right. my new brake pads here. Um, and so the same way that you took them out, you're gonna slide them in. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna rehang this caliber back where it needs to be here on the make sure you line up your clip you just find your bolt holes line them up come over here and look at this you see this bracket has a little clip so if you actually if you when you unbolt it when you put it back if you clip it in it's kind of holding it right where it needs to be so that you can put these in here. And this bottom one, you might have to wiggle the caliber just a little bit. Make sure that none of your brake lines have any kinks or anything in them. That would be very problematic. Here's how you reinstall the pads. 
So you push them in here. And don't push them in all the way. You want to make sure that those pins are going to be able to get in to line up on these holes here. See these holes? They're going to be at the edge. So get them in. Oh, a little bit too much. Okay. And then you take your pin. You um, clean it still. Yeah, where's the wire? Probably on the other side. Put nitrogen in this stuff real quick. Now we're going to install these pins through the pads. If you noticed earlier in the video, it was really tough to get these out because all this build up on here. So we're going to scrub them a little bit, get them kind of clean, and then slide them in. Make sure they line up. This is going to have to be pulled back just a hair. There we go. That one. Okay, and then when you get it all the way in, make sure you put your cotter pin in. Okay. And you do that the, one more time for the second one. Uh, don't here. forget about the spring. Yeah, you have a spring. This is the new one. Right here. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the spring in like that, okay? And you can leave it hang like that. And put your pin in. Clean this one. Put your pin and make sure it goes through that hole on the spring. Okay? Like that. And then you can go straight across, go through that one. And then. Yeah. Alright, so basically now what I'm gonna do is, uh, if we can see here, uh, I'm gonna this spring you got to make sure that you line that up so that it goes through there um, and so sometimes you got to give it a little bit of a tap no. all right and then you come over here and you're gonna line up the hole and put the cotter pin in I actually used the um, original pin that I took out um, it's made with a little I'll show it to you uh, it's made with a little loop in it. Um, the ones that they gave me at the auto parts store don't have that little loop, and so they are. You might have to bend them over or something so they don't come out. And there you go. You got it. And the whole assembly is back together. Um, and yeah, that's your rotors and caliber. All right, so I forgot real quick. Um, you got to reassemble this clip. Um, and so you push this in. And it gets mounted there, and then you push this back, and it clips in that hole, and so it should look like that. Um, it's basically just like a tension spring. Same deal here. You push it in. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. Side and it clips onto the inside. It'll focus. There we go. Yep, just like that. And so that's how it should look when you're done. Together, basically all we gotta do is put the tire on. Let's push my creep up back where it needs to be. Like so.
on the ground. Get started on the back now. The front is finished and bolted, tightened down. Don't know the torque spec, tighten it until you think it's tight enough, then tighten it a little more. Let me get where I can lay down real quick. I'll show you where to jack this up. You place your lifting jack on that control arm right there. You break your lug nuts loose while the wheel is on the ground, but leave them on. We're going to raise this up. And then I'm going to place the jack stand. Get under here. The jack stand is going to go on the axle tube itself. Right about there. I'm going to go ahead and finish lifting this until I get the wheel off the ground and I'll show you the finished product. Once again, one hand jack, the other hand the film. Oh, how is that wheel off? About an inch? Alright. Stand ready. I have to go up just a hair more so I can get that to click in. Uh, there we go. Jack stands locked. Lower this down gently. There we go. Keep the weight on the jack, but you have the stand support. So tools for this one, um, you're going to need the 17 millimeter, um, the C clamp to push the caliper back, uh, the piston back inside the caliper, the maul for tapping on the rotor, um, and then also I've got the uh, 21 lug wrench on the uh, impact so I can take them off. Quick. Remember to loosen those before you pick it up off the ground because you'll be trying to loosen them and the tire will be spinning. Um, so, a little bit different than the front. Um, you got your caliper here. There's going to be two bolts on the back. You're, there's no bracket um, that you have to use the 12 millimeter take off the little bracket on the front. There is none on here. This is all flex line. So, when you take these two bolts out the back, um, this whole caliber is just going to pick up, move it to the side so we can work on the rotor. Okay. Alright. So, now we're going to get in here and get these. I don't know if you can see, but there's one right here. So, we're going to loosen that one. Or is the dark flash went out? Yep, flash went out. So, we're going to loosen those bolts real quick and get back to you. Alright, got those bolts off. Now we're going to pull the caliper off and once again rest it down on something gentle to where it's not holding all that weight on that line. There's the caliper off. Just rest it on something where it's not up here taking all that weight. The rotor's probably stuck. Just smack it. Just don't hit the lug nuts. note there's a brake drum inside the rotor it's all one piece and that's your parking brake there you want to inspect to make sure your linings aren't all messed up which these are in good shape and go ahead and put your new rotor on and once again make sure it's clean of all that anti-rust stuff that one's on there I'm ready to hey. push the caliber back you do is you remove the to push the caliper pack, you take off the outer brake pad to where it's just the one against the piston, and you put the clamp against that brake pad and then the back side of the caliper. So. Then you can squeeze that brake uh, the caliper back in.
tightening that up, I'll give you your second round tip of the day. After you do a full brake job like this, calipers, rotor, or just rotors and pads all the way around, you want to go ahead and seat those right after you put them on. So you go to a nice big open parking lot like this one, you get the car up as quickly as safely, and then you slam on the brakes. Try not to skid the brakes, just slam on the brakes. Do that four or five times to get them nice and hot. It'll burn off that coating if there's any left. It'll get everything seated in and where it should be. And then your brakes will be ready for normal use. So now he's getting the new pads and shims and everything to put back into the caliper. Clips can sometimes be hard to work with. Um, I would go ahead and definitely change them. Get new ones though if they give them to you. And some might be a little bit thicker or thinner sometimes. Finish just changing those. I'll show you when we put the pads back in. Alright, here's the new rear brake pads. They slide into those little slots. Sometimes they can be trouble to get in there. That's where the screwdrivers come in hand sometimes. That one's about there. You do the other one where it clips into the right by the piston. We'll finish that and get back with you. Well, we're going to finish with these pads. Place the caliper back on where it goes. Put the bolts back in their holes. Tighten them up nice and snug. Then you can reinstall the wheel, tighten those up nice and snug, raise the jack up slightly to get it off of the stand, remove the stand, then lower the jack down gently. Make sure, go through all the way around, make sure all your lug nuts are nice and tight, and then go ahead and do that break-in procedure. I mean, you don't have to do it right away, you can, you know, go down the street. Uh, when you push it the first time, you're going to go all the way to the floor, and you let it out, and just pump it a few times. You know, it should come back to normal. Um, feels pretty good. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, just kind of seat them in a little bit. I'm break them in. He's gonna go fast and slam on the brakes. Uh, go the length of the parking lot, really get going fast. You got to heat them up. Don't back into my truck now. So what this is doing is molding the face of the pads to the rotors. Looks like it's stopping pretty good. Job well done.